In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a custom table of contents in the all-new Adobe Captivate. I'm Paul Wilson and I make videos about e-learning. If you enjoy these videos, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share these videos with all of your e-learning colleagues. I think I've done this video before a long time ago in the classic days. One of the advantages of the built-in table of contents in Adobe Captivate Classic was that you could choose the style of table of contents, you could change the colors. There was a lot of customization that you could do and not so much in the all new Adobe Captivate. I'm hoping that a more robust version of the table of contents is in the roadmap for the all new Adobe Captivate. But right now we're dealing with basically a black table of contents and there's really not much we can do to customize it. In this video today, what I'm gonna show you how to do is to build your own table of contents, at least you know the, the key sections, the chapters of your e-learning course, and to be able to navigate to those and also show progress using a neat little check mark trick that I can show you uh, once you've visited one of the chapters. Let's get started. Okay, so we've got one of the quick start projects that I've modified to kind of fit our needs here. On slide number two, I have built my custom table of contents. This is where most of the work will happen here. We've got these individual list items and I've duplicated it a number of times, give it in a different name, section one, section two, section three and of course, final quiz. The first thing we need are custom states that these buttons will become once we've clicked on them. So I'm gonna select the first one here. We're gonna open up our visual properties inspector and we're gonna add a state here. Now this state is gonna be called completed and we're gonna change its appearance so that the bullet turns into a check mark once we switch to that completed state. We're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna add a custom user state here, and this will also be called completed, and we'll change that bullet to a check mark, and we'll do the same thing for section three. We'll change that to a, first of all, add our states there, call it completed, and we'll change that to a check mark there. So now these objects um, have the additional state we need. We need to turn them into interactive objects. So the first one here, we'll click on the interactions icon in the right-hand toolbar, and we'll click on add an interaction. And when someone click taps section one, we are going to go to a particular slide section one and click done. We're also going to set the state of section one to that completed state there. Press next. And uh, we're gonna leave reset state on slide revisit and we'll go done. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for section two. We'll add an interaction. When someone clicks or taps that, we are going to go to slide section two, the first slide of section two, and we're also going to set the state of our section two object to the section two completed state. Click next. Again, leave reset state on slide revisit unselected. Click done. Do the same thing for section three. Add an interaction when someone clicks or taps it we will go to the beginning of section three, click done, and we'll change the state to section three to look completed as well. Click done, okay? So that takes care of those three items. While we're here, there's no extra state needed for the quiz item, but we do want to take someone to the final quiz uh, once that option becomes available and they click and tap it. So we'll click tap and we'll go to slide, in this case here, the section four, which is the start of the quiz section. And we'll just press done there. 
Okay, I don't want the quiz item to be shown by default. So I'm going to select that and we are going to hide it during publish. So you'll only see section one, section two, section three. But what we want to create is an interaction that says if all three of these items have been selected, we want to show the quiz item so that the student can go on and finish the course. So for that, I'm just going to click outside of the slide to see the slide level interactions. So we'll go ahead and press the plus next to slide interactions. And when we enter this slide, we want to look at a set of conditions. Basically, have all three of the custom states for section one, two, and three been viewed. So we'll click the plus icon here. We'll choose custom state of section one and the completed state, select next, and it has been viewed. Press save. We'll add another condition, custom states of section two, the completed state, has it been viewed, save, and one more, custom states, section three, next, has it been viewed, save. And if so, we're going to show our quiz item. Press next, and done. That's all well and good. Of course, we've got all of our navigation set up. Let's just make sure these slides navigate as they should. So at the beginning of section one, the next button will take us to our next slide. On the second slide of section one, the back button will, of course, take us to the previous slide. Press done. And the forward button, this is the last forward button of this section, will now jump back to our table of contents. Press done. Let's repeat that for section two. So next will take us to the next slide. And on the last slide of section two, the back button will take us to the previous slide. Done. But the forward button, like before, will jump to the table of contents slide. Okay. Here's section three. Our next button will go to the next slide. Press done. And then we have our back button on the second slide of section three. That will take us to the previous slide. Done. And then this forward button here, again, like before, will go to our table of contents slide. Done. And of course, our quiz button uh, has a start button there, so we will make sure that that goes to the next slide. Let's go back up to the top of our project here and test this out and see if it all works. All right, here we go. So there's our first slide, start. We've got section one, section two, section three. No quiz button as of yet, but let's go ahead and press section one. And now we see our first section here, next. Let's complete this interaction. Next, back to section one. Notice the check mark is now beside our section one. Uh, section two, next. Let's visit all of these different uh, click to reveals. And we're done, so we'll go ahead and move forward. We've now completed section two. I should remind you that these can be done in any order. They don't have to be done one through three in that particular order. But let's finish section three. Next. Bunch of flip cards here. Next. And now, of course, our sections are completed. Our quiz button is available and we can go ahead and start the final quiz. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.